came in. Can anybody hear me? Yes, please, we can hear you, Sister Clementa. Okay. I'm not able to see the screen, Charlie. Yes, please, Sister Clementa, I think you can start. The, the PPT is coming, it's loading. Maybe if, uh, it, 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 it will show soon. It's loading. Okay. okay, just one minute. I don't know if anybody can hear me. If you can hear me, just probably can put in the chat box. Amen. 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 We can hear you. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. We hope you're all doing fine. Um, happy Sunday to each and every one of us. Um, uh, it's really good to be here once more. And first of all, I'd like to thank the Lord for this great opportunity that He has given us here, uh, for everything that He has done in my life, and um, for everything that He is continuously doing. And I'm really grateful. You know, last week was a week like, well, I think it, there is a grace um, that God showed me. There's something that God revealed and showed to me that uh, a grace for another capacity that I didn't know that I had. But <laughs> I thank the Lord for everything and how he yeah, has really shown me his mighty hand and his power and everything. And I'm really grateful for what he has been doing in my life. And I also would like to thank Pastor Malik for this great opportunity that he has given us me to once more share the word of God. And also to like thank uh, the entire leadership of MCC um, for the support, for prayer. And I know that the entire house, you know, is praying and we're always praying for each other. Thank you so much. So we're in the month of discipleship and service and um, throughout this month, we have been learning about discipleship, you know, and about discipleship and um, the service. And the title of my message is Disciple to Disciple. I'm taken from Matthew 28, 16 to, to 20. And before we even go through it, I just want us to bow and pray. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, mighty God, for once more bringing us into your house, Lord, to worship and to praise you. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, even as we come. Father, we pray that your mighty presence abide, Lord, wherever we are gathered. And we pray, Father, that you open our heart, you open our ears, you open our understanding. But more than that, may the word, Father, become a reality in our life not just by us listening, but we become a doer of your word. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you take full control. And I pray, mighty God, that you use me as an instrument, as your verse, that the word you have spoken, you have poured out, that you use me to release it in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, may you take full control, that I might not be I or me speaking, but you speaking through me. And I pray, Father, that this word will fall on each heart, Father, that you've prepared each and every heart in this place. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Take full control, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, next slide. And I want us to look in the contents of um, Matthew. You know that you know the message of today is in Matthew 28, 16 to 20. It's a famous scripture that almost everybody knows. And not just the believers, but even the people that are unbelievers, <laughs> they know about the Great Commission that we are all sent to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. And as we read, then the level disciple went away into the Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make this up of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And that, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Next slide. And I just want us to look, you know, though we all have known, and surely enough, always when I when I, when I, when I, I present something, I write, I, I really start starting with the recap what we have learned last week, so that it really laid the foundation and rem bring us to remember what we have learned as we continue to in this month. And we know that last week we spoke about who is the disciple. And we also learned that the disciple, the word is have come from the Greek Matete, which means a learner, hallelujah. And we also see that there are three types of disciple. I mean, the couriers and those that are convinced but are not ready to risk their life for Jesus. And we also have the committed one. Well, unfortunately, that, you know, um, the reality of our world today is that if we have more than committed disciple, that means almost our world will be better, you know. But unfortunately, we have much more of those that are convinced but are not ready to risk their life for Jesus, you know. The couriers are out there, which they don't even want to do anything. And for those that are committed, yeah, there are very few. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want us to also see that when Jesus started his ministry on preaching the gospel, you know, he didn't just start preaching the gospel and continue like that, but he also called disciples, you know, people to follow him, starting with the 12. And even if we continue, as he continued his ministry, he also called other people to join him, you know. He, all his ministry was all about preaching the word of God, displaying the kingdom, and as well as calling disciples, people to belong to the kingdom. Hallelujah. And we see that as a backup, what in Act, you know, 1, 21 and 22 says. Amen. Next slide. Now, if you look at that contents of Jesus preaching the gospel and calling us, you know, uh, each and every one of us to be his disciple. Now I, I have a question for each and every one of us. Oh, did all of the disciples that Jesus called out throughout his ministry made the requirement? Hallelujah. Did all people that follow Jesus made the requirement for me, for him to be his disciple? Did all of them made that requirement? I mean, it's a question that really came to me and I was just asking myself, like, if last week we talked about those, are, that means not, really everyone that made that requirement of be a disciple of Jesus. And we learned last week about it. And the reason why not all of them made that requirement is that Jesus, you know, in Luke 25 to 23, talk about there is a cost. I mean, there is always a requirement if you want to follow Jesus. And Jesus didn't even hide it, but if he's recording all the four gospel, you know, that if you really want to be a disciple, there is a cost. And if you look to the Matthew, you know, in the main scripture of today, talk about Matthew 28, if you read from 16 to 17, it said that then the level disciple went away into the Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus has appointed to them. You know, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Now, the qualification of you being a disciple of Jesus doesn't mean there is an absence of doubt. We saw that one through 
um, the, some of the disciples that even follow Jesus, not all of them, they believed like in the point, in the certain issue on the certain contest. So we see that though they were with them, you know, though they were there, some of them, they doubted at the point that Thomas even when seeing Jesus Christ, you know, when the disciple told him about, oh, the Lord has risen, Thomas said, I'll not even believe. I mean, he doubted until the Lord appeared to him saying that, oh, stop doubting, but believe. So the, the, the belief in there it was not the fact that they would not believe or they doubted that he is the son of God, but believe in the fact that what happened in that season. So we see that all the disciples, even through the course of ministry of Jesus, they have that issues. You know, some they believe it, some they doubt, some they didn't even believe it at all. And they have all those things, but they disqualify them from being the followers of Jesus or the, being the disciple. That recall or stands in which one, each and every one respond. I just want us to go to the next slide and then we'll come back to this slide. Amen, next slide. Now, if you look in the, if you look in the, if you look in the uh, in the in our scripture of today, you know the cost. Jesus was talking about there is a cost to follow him. So, in Luke fourteen twenty five, Jesus says, "The large crowd, you know, this is scripture recorded that the large crowd were traveling with Jesus, and traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, this was Jesus turning to the crowd." Oh, almost everybody were traveling with him. Almost everybody were following him you know, all around as he, he continued in his ministry. Now, Jesus turned to him, turned to all of them and said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate the father or mother or children and brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does, does not carry their own cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one want to build a tower, won't he sit, won't he first sit down and estimate the cost? And if you see, if, he, if, he, 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 if you have enough money to complete it, for complete it, for if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish, anyone who see it will re ridicule you saying, this person began a building and wasn't able to finish. And or suppose the king is about to go to a war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider that he's able to be 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with the 20,000? If he's not able, he will send a delegation while he's still on the way, longer way off, and will ask the term of peace. In the same way, those of you who want to give who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciple. So this is where lay the requirement for you to become or for you to be the disciple of Jesus. You know, yes, you can become a follower. You can believe, you know, in Jesus Christ and all those things. But what he's saying that there is a cost. And if you don't meet that requirement, you cannot be my disciple. So in another word, when Jesus was saying that, in another word, Jesus, what he was saying is that, that if anyone wish to follow me, yes, you are all doing, but to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside all his interests, all things, you know, the selfish ambition and all these things that tangles, you know, uh, all the worries of life, you know, the issues that even this generation are so entangled with, you know, you must what? Lay aside, you must deny even your own self. Take up your cross, you know, caring or supporting, you know, be willing to suffer, be willing to endure persecution, be willing to suffer, be willing to experience whatever Jesus has experienced, you know. And we know that Jesus Christ said that even if I am, I mean, the house, the master of the house is called Beelzebub. So that means, you have to be standing so that if the master was persecuted, how much born a member of the, 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 the household? So you have to be willing to go through what Jesus went through. And you have to endure whatever it might come in your way and follow him 
follow him by believing, following his way, conforming to example, conforming to his ways of living, if needed, even suffering, you know, perhaps even dying because of the faith that you profess to have. And that's why Paul even continues saying that, um, that, you know, that I'm willing to die for Christ. That was Paul. He was talking about what? Becoming. He said that even if he's to die, like in conformity, die like him, I'm willing to do it. Now we see that throughout his ministry, three years and a half of his ministry, Jesus is teaching and the different kind of, or different kind of topic that we bring up about his ministry or even a personal miracle up and here and there. Everything about his ministry will cause people to react in different ways. It will cause people to react in different ways. It will cause people to react in different ways. So we can see that, you know, that for some of his teaching, you know, I'm just going to bring some of the question that some of them, they felt offended by the message. You know, some they will cause, they say that the, the message caused offense of them, leading some of them to abandon Jesus, no longer follow him. Some they say they had teaching and some they didn't even accept or receive the message. And some say that he's demon possessed, like he had a demon on him. That's why he's casting out demons. That's why he's performing all the miracles. And some, you know, there are so many, but also they have some good response to his gospel that, you know, that, that, um, that some of them, they, they, they find joy in his teaching because they were teaching about forgiveness of sin and all that. Though for some of them, forgiveness of sin was that it's a good news for them, but some of them, they cause offense. I mean, like, how, who is he to forgive sin? I mean, is he God, you know, like things like that. Some of the Pharisees, they took offense on, them, on, 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 on Jesus. And, you know, although Jesus was preaching and teaching, he said that if you do not carry your cross, cross and follow me you cannot be my disciple now one of the disciple comes now to jesus said that lord this is was peter you know i'm hearing you know he's teaching about you know the cost of everything jesus now come to you and say see lord see we have left everything to follow you what then will we have and jesus i sure i said that those that really follow me truly i say unto you even in the new world when the son of man will sit on his glorious throne, that is Matthew 19, you know, it says that you sit in his glory throne, you who are following me will also sit in the 12th throne and judging the 12th tribe of Israel. Previous slide. Amen. Pre pre previous slide, please. So we see that the requirement for you to become a believer, the requirement for you to become the disciple of Jesus start with believing. Hallelujah. Start with believing. Hallelujah. So yes, as we are talking, as our title of our, of our, of our message today is you are disciples so that you can disciple. Hallelujah. You can disciple others. So this is what Jesus did. He disciples is, is, is the his follower, people that were willing to obey, people that are willing to follow him, he disciple. But one of the first requirements for you to become a follower of Jesus is for you to believe, hallelujah, to believe in him, to believe in him. But the believing in itself, it's not enough when it comes to become the follower, or become the disciple of Jesus. It needs more than just believe. It needs more than just believe. You have to be willing. It's really need more than just believe. You have to be willing. That's why in James, if you read in James 2, it says that, yes, if you say that I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. Can I show you that believing in some is foolish or it's nothing, you know, without an action? So believing in God is not just enough for you to become the disciple of Jesus. You have to follow the others, you know, the, 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 the other requirement. Because if you look at the multitude where Jesus, um, when Jesus was preaching, almost everybody believed in him and they were willing what to follow. But why did Jesus now turn to the crowd saying that if you really want to become my disciple, you have to do this and that and this. You have to abandon, you have to do, you have to carry your cross, you have to do, there's so many requirements there, um, as Jesus says. So the first of this is to, to believe because you have to have faith in him. 
you have to have faith in him, in Jesus Christ. And the problem doesn't just lie on the belief in our today's, in our today's, um, in our today's world, the problem is not even about the belief. The Muslim belief, the Buddha belief, almost everybody believes that Jesus, you know, there is Jesus. But what comes then after they have believed? Now, when I talk about discipleship, yes, that is the point because if we are disciple to, to carry this with great commission to be able to disciple also others, we have to come to that point or get that understanding so that when we are out there, when we go out, we are able to efficiently disciple others. So we see that the majority of our problem in our society today is not, it's not on, it's not on, on, on just, you know, believing. The majority lie on follow and obey in order for you to become the disciple. You know, because if everyone are able, willing to follow Jesus or to obey, the, our world will become one, one of the, I would say perfect, right? It will become one of the perfect. So we can see that throughout his ministry, Jesus is calling people, not just to believe in him, but also to follow and to obey, amen. And you see that, yes, and uh, this is what, um, this is what um, uh, 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 in John, if you read in John, we'll talk about the belief, you read in John, it says that while Peter, while Peter, you know, was seeing all these things where people have deserted Jesus Christ, you know, when Jesus said that now, if you want to become my disciple, this is what you have to do. But not just talk about believing because all of them, they have come to believe. If you read in John 7, it says that many of the crowd believe in him. This in John 7, 31, said that many of the crowd believe in him. You know, and even in John 8, it said that as they spoke to the crowd, many believe. All those many, they were the ones who were following Jesus on the way. Because even as they believe, you know, some of them, they believed while they, they, Jesus healed them. And some while they, through the preaching, some different way, but all of them believed. And as they believe, they follow Jesus. And now Jesus is turning and say that, yes, you have believed. Now that you have believed, you have to carry up your cross. <laughs> Believing is not just enough. And if you read now, Jesus said that, yes, as you have come to believe, you know, Peter was like, oh, Lord, after everybody have turned up, abandoned, they're like, we have come. Where will you? We have come to believe that you are the Holy One of God. So we see that through that, the first recommend is for you to believe. Now, Jesus is calling them, you have to call what? As a disciple, as a disciple, we now we have come also to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And Jesus is saying that, yes, as you have come to believe, the next step you have to do, you have, you have to follow me. Everyone who wants to become my disciple, they have to what? To follow me and in Matthew 16 it says that and Jesus says to you whoever wants to be my son might deny themselves take up the cross and follow me you have to follow Jesus and that's what the disciple did they follow the true disciple they follow Jesus and Mark says that you know in the end and Mark 10 56 says that you know uh this is what the bar, 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 not follow, um, Bartimaeus yeah Bartimaeus you know when 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 Jesus have healed him Immediately, but Mel just, you know, as after he received his sight, he what he did, he followed Jesus on the road. He was also one of the followers, so he followed Jesus on the road. So we can see that it's not just about, you know, you believing. The disciple of Jesus, they have to believe and they have to follow him all the way, all places that Jesus went. Not just follow him on the way Jesus that Jesus went, but I want us to read in John, when they talk about obedience, because yes, you are following Jesus. Now you have to obey him. Hallelujah. The follow aspect is not just about following like, oh, I know Jesus. Yeah, I'll go wherever you want to go. But it goes much beyond it. Hallelujah. And if you read in John 8, it says that, and, we, and he who sent me is always with me. He's talking about this Jesus. Jesus is coming to disciple, his disciple, to disciple his follower. And that is, this is how he put it. He who understand me, Jesus is sending each and every one. And Jesus said that, yes, me too, I was sent. And he who one who sent me, he has not left me alone. Hallelujah. But because I always do what pleases him. He's talking about obedience. And as he say these things, many believed in him. 
that was the first. Many believed in him. But and then he says that, that so Jesus was saying, was saying to the Jew who had believed in him, if you abide in my word continuously, obeying my teaching and living according, living in accordance with them then you are truly my disciple. So Jesus was not just calling them like, oh, come believe in me and that is it. But Jesus said that you have to what? Follow me. The same way that the one who sent me, I pleased him, he always with me, is the same way that I'm sending you, that you what? You also believe. So this is how we, this is the stand we stand right now. And each and every one of us, we have been disciple to follow Jesus, to to do, to, to believe in him, to follow him, and to obey him, so that we are what? His disciple. So, and then um, uh, if you read in Mark, it says that then he called the crowd along with him. We'll talk about, you know, in whatever want to be my disciple, they must deny themselves, pick up the cross, and follow him. So, it included these four. Hallelujah. Next slide. It included these four. But and then when it comes, next. Now, and then when it comes about, when you talk about discipleship, now we have two accession components of discipleship. As each and every one we have been discipled, I believe all each, each and every one of us, we have passed through all of them. Now, discipleship have two components. The first component is the evangelist, evangelist component. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus starting from John the Baptist and what Jesus did, the component, hallelujah. This is what John the Baptist even did much of it. You know, John the Baptist went ahead and he prepared, you know, the first component and things like that. So that, but the one that comes after him will lay the foundation of not just the first, but also continue to take about the second. And that's what Jesus did. And if you look closely, the first component is an evangelist component where we now, we feel we that we have been disciples, we have to carry because Jesus said that, and Jesus in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, if you read, said that, and Jesus came to them and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. He's saying that all authority has been given to me now, as I have this authority, I'm sending you, each and every one of us, to what? To go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we see that the first component is evangelist component, which we are to go and preach the word of God. So as we are right now, I just want us to take note, if you don't have a netbook, if you don't have anything, you might be in that position like, oh, I have no idea how should I go and make disciples. Just take it. A notebook, hallelujah. Take a notebook and make a note, you know, so that you know what is the first thing you have to do, or how do you do it, or whatever. You know, like taking position, like um just take note. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's take a note of what we are talking about. And the first component is evangelism, which we are to go, what Jesus says, that go ye therefore and make disciple of all nations. So Jesus is saying that you should go and preach the word of God. So this is what the disciples, even in the first church, did. They went out there, they spread the gospel. But and then he says that pre after you have preached the gospel, for those who have believed what you do, you will baptize in them. And then say, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we see that as you preach the gospel, those that believe in the word of God, those that believe, um, those that are believing, you will have to baptize them. That is the second aspect. After you have preached the word of God, after they have accepted the word of God, you baptize them in water. You baptize them in water. Hallelujah. You baptize them in water. And then after they have been baptized in water, you will have to baptize them in the Holy Spirit. You have to lay their hands on them so that they receive the what? The Holy Spirit. And after they have received the Holy Spirit, now you enter in the second stage, which is a mentoring, mentoring component. The second component of evangelism is a second component, which is, as it says in verse 20, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And though I am with you always, even to the end of age, amen. 
So we see the second component of in, uh, discipleship is for you to mentor it. After they have received the word of God, after they have believed, after they are saved, you baptize them, you baptize them in the Holy Spirit, and then you mentor, you begin to mentor them, which means you have to teach and feed them the word of God. You have to teach them to follow Jesus. You have to teach them to obey the word of God, to abide by it. Hallelujah. You, you take care of their welfare. Hallelujah. You holistic them, get them what? You holistic get them what? Um, get them mature in every aspect in every aspect of their life. And that's what, that's what the discipleship is all about. So if Jesus is saying that we should go out there and make disciples, this is what we are supposed to do. Hallelujah. I want us to really, really uh, picture this. If you have something, write it down, uh, make a note. This is what Jesus is calling us to do, to go out there to evangelize the first step. After you have done the first step, when you get people there who are converted, you baptize them, you place your hand on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. And after they have received the Holy Spirit, you now enter into a, a component or a stage of mentoring them. Hallelujah. So that they also become mature and then they can also go out there and preach the gospel. Amen. So we see that all these components are there. Amen. And we see that Mentoring in itself, when it comes to the first component, it's, it's, it doesn't matter about the quantity or the number of it. You know, because when we are preaching the word of God, we, we can be on one on one, preach the word of God wherever we go, in the street, in the college, in the school, wherever we are. And, 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 and you can also be, can also be in groups, wherever you find yourself in groups, you preach the word of God and whatever, accept the word of God there, you, you, you direct them into prayer, they will accept, they will do, they will and then you commit them unto the Lord, and then you baptize them and you, you, you pray for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. But when it comes to the mentoring aspect of it, it's not just about the crowd. Because yes, when it comes to the first, yes, that's how we do it. We see that even through the, the, the book of Acts. If you really want to know how did the first church disciple the church, not just you read you, the, the book that I would recommend you to really to go over and over again in the book of Acts. You will see how they disciple people, how they teach them, how they do everything. And even according as mentoring much more deeper, according to what Paul did, if you read over to the New, all the entire New Testament that we go on, hallelujah. So we see that, that when it comes to mentoring stage, we now have what? We have uh, the group aspect, you know, we can see that through the scripture later on, when you have one-on-one, -on -one, when you come to the disciple, you have one-on-one, -on -one, it's about you interacting with the person and the person has question and you teach them, you, 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 you instruct them and all the things. And you can also um, um, be in like, probably as a disciple, as Jesus did with his disciple, the 12, three, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, that's how Jesus disciple, And we follow the same party, hallelujah, as we are discipling other people as we go. Amen. So we see that even as we look through all these um, components of, of, of really going up and of really going up and preaching the gospel. Next, next slide. So the first one, I want us to go deeper in the evangelism, the, the first component, which is the evangelist component of discipleship or the first stage, you can also call it that way. Um, now, when it comes to the first stage, in Acts 16, if you read in Acts 16, 31 says that, and then, you know, as you are going out there to preach the gospel, and then it says, that, and they say, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and a household. This was Paul when he was, when he was what? Ministered to the jailer. And we see also that Peter, Peter in, in, as, as he went, as the great commission really been given to them, this is what Peter did. He stood up in the crowd as the, after they have received the Holy Spirit. And then he addressed the crowd. He preached the gospel to them. 
repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin, and you will receive the gift of the Spirit. The first one, you preach the word of God to them. For, the, for, for, for different instances, you see that it was on one-on-one, -on -one, or on two, or, or on 12, on the crowd. You preach to them. Hallelujah. Me, I'm more practical today. I'm really more practical. Those are steps that we can apply daily in our lives. We have the doctrine, we have the word, we have everything. I mean, we have been disciples now years after years. If you count it, it's two years. Each and every one of us is already have two years of being disciples. And now I'm just giving you a, a practical step where you can really go into action. You really have to put them into practice in your school, whatever you find yourself in. Amen. So you, you, you preach the word of God that for Peter, he was on one-on-one -on -one with the jailer. Repent, you know that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and be saved. And Peter was in the crowd. And we also see throughout the scripture that what, um, and even, 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 even as, 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 um, as Paul was ministering with the 12, even in the Ephesia, when Paul, um, when the apostle went to Jerusalem and had in Samaria that received the word of God, this was Peter. And then Peter and John to Samaria, when they arrived there, they prayed that they, they pray that the new believer that they might receive the Holy Spirit. So you see that even as you are disciple, the first stage is that you have to preach the word of God, get them saved, get them to accept their Lord Jesus Christ. And after they have accepted, after they have repented, you baptize them from the repent for you baptize them, you know, for the remission, for the forgiveness of their sin. You know, it's much about confirmation or what you believe on, because baptism doesn't really make you safe. It's about believing. Why do I say that? Because it happened with Cornelius. It happened with, um, with other believers as well, even as we read in the book of Acts. So we see that it's an act of you, of obedience to Jesus Christ. At the same way, it's an act of confirmation of your faith that Jesus commanded us to do so that each and everyone who believe they are baptized. So that means you have to baptize them. Hallelujah. This is what they said when they have arrived and prayed to the new believer, they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has not yet come on them. So after they have been baptized, you have to pray so that they might receive the Holy Spirit. The problem with our generation today is like we are out there, we are preaching the gospel. After we are done, you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the word of God. Bye bye. Yeah. Find the church. You know, the good thing is you direct them, but we don't just abandon them. That's why they're just there. They are not transformed after they have received the word, they are that there. The reason why I'm saying this is because, yes, I was in the church once before, you know, I was in the church and I have no idea that there is a Holy Spirit. I mean, I knew like the Holy Spirit, we pray in the church in the Holy Spirit, but I didn't know that the Holy Spirit is a person, that we actually can have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. I had no idea about that. It was when after I came to China, you know, I heard preacher, the, 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 the one of the preacher was preaching, the pastor saying that, and then the Holy Spirit, there's a gift and there is this. I was blown away and I started desiring. Did I receive right away when I received the word when I was baptized? No, but was later on, you know, later on as they prayed for me, every time when they say, who want to receive the Holy Spirit? I was the first one to go in front. <laughs> I was the first one to be there, like, I want this Holy Spirit, you know, and I remember one of these days, you know, and Pastor Sharon, when she came and she was preaching to the ladies and, and, and she asked, who wants, who didn't receive the gift of the Spirit? You cannot speak in tongues, you cannot, and then me, I was the first one in line. I also want that, you know, I really want, because what? I also wanted, I also wanted, I also wanted, hallelujah. So we see that it's not just, yes, after they have heard the word, the click, they can receive the Holy Spirit, just like that as Cornelio, as happened with Cornelio, when they are hearing the word, and then the Holy Spirit came to them. And after they have received the Holy Spirit, and then what Peter said, Peter have to baptize them in water. So it can happen, but you know, sometimes it doesn't really happen that way. So when we are disciples other people, we have to notice that. After they have received the words, some of them is instantly, the Holy Spirit just come on them and they are speaking in tongues before they even receive the baptism of water. 
So as we are back, as we are preaching, as we are, as we are going out there to minister to other people, we have to have in mind that though they are, they are there, we have to, what? Place our hand on them so that they receive the Holy Spirit. The reason why we have so many believers that are out there walking up and down, they don't even have the Holy Spirit. I mean, probably they have, but they don't have the gift. It help you. It help. It really help, especially when it comes to prayer, to communion, to fellowship. What strengthen you? Because the Holy Spirit is the one that prays on our behalf. And if you do not have the Holy Spirit, how we are, what, how we are to pray? We don't really know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit is the one who interceded, so that it is necessary. That's why the Spirit came, not just to enable them not just to enable them to, to preach or to pray or to have a communion to, with God, but also enable them to, watch, to become a faithful or effective disciple. That Jesus says, you receive the spirit and after you receive my spirit, you be my witness. What was saying? After you receive the spirit, you become effective because it's not going to be you, but the Holy Spirit in you working. Amen. So the next slide. So we see that, you know, even after, 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 <laughs> before I even touch on the following aspect, I want us to look on Act, Act 17. Act 17, if you read from verse um, 19, Act 19. Act 19, if you read it from verse 1, it was talking about Peter in Ephesus. And he said that if, when he arrived in Ephesus, he found some of the disciples and he asked them, they were what? Disciple of Jesus. Because Joe, you might not have the, all the components, but the requirement for you, one of the first requirements for you to become the disciple of Jesus for you to believe. So look at what he says. Then he found some of the disciples and asked him, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And then the answer, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? And, and John, they replied, John baptism. Paul says, Oh, John baptism was the baptism of repentance. He told the people, believe in the one who come after John. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul at first baptized them, and then in what verse he said that when Paul placed his hand on them, the Holy Spirit came on them in the spoken tongue and the prophesied. How much were there? Twelve. 12. I want us to look on 12. And it, this is verse 7. But you look at 8. It says what? When John went, when, Peter, when uh, Paul went to Ephesians, well, this is what he did. Paul entered into the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months. This is how Paul was so intentional. He was there three months. You know, arguing, persuading both about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate and refused to believe. And publicly malignated, um, malignant the way. So Paul left them and took the disciples with him and had discussion daily on the lecture hall of theater. Daily. For what? Two years. Daily for two years. So we see that it was not just about you go there, discipleship is not about today, today. It is a journey. Paul spent with these 12 people, or probably more, two years discipling them. From the first stage to the second, hallelujah. So when you talk about the following now, the next stage we do, we teach them what? To follow, that's the, 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 the mentoring, the mentoring, um, uh, component of discipleship. When we enter the mentoring component of discipleship, the first thing we do is what? To teach them to follow Jesus. Now, Jesus was very clear when he said that everyone who wants to be his disciple, you must what? Follow him. Now, for the word follow, funny enough, I really went to, to I went to really to look. I find out that the word follow, not just stated 90 times in the, in the New Testament, but Almost 80 times in the only the four gospel, only on the gospel is 80 times. And look and and and, and, and look what, what it says, the word follow in Greek. It's about akoloteo, meaning following 
and follow one who precedes. Join him in his attendance, join him as a disciple. Well, now, if we divide that word follow, one is a particle of union, and another one is, is uh, the same word. word um, bended to Kelotios, which means the road, which only can be decided to put all this word together, which can be decided to be the same way, to see the same way with somebody. So, have you heard that proverb say that, oh, they are the what? They are the same road. I mean, like when you talk about in the bad contents, though we can apply this as a good content, but in a world today, we say ah, they are the same road. Like, I mean, that means. Everything they do is the same. They're similar. Hallelujah. So we see even through the, through the scripture that Jesus, even in the early church, what they were called, they are called of what? Of the way. Followers of the way. So when it comes now for us to teach them to follow Jesus, when it now comes to teach us to follow Jesus, you know, and as Jesus, this follow is the same follow that is used in all the four gospels. It doesn't really, it, it, that is the only meaning that I could find. And I really went like clicking, checking each and every word in every scripture. I find out that, that it is the exactly the same word when Jesus speak and teach, he might what? Follow, 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 follow. It's the same word that is used. So we see that, you know, that is how the disciples were called. Why? Because even as, you, 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 as, 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 as the disciples went on preaching and preaching the word of God and teaching, they were identified. He says what? This is how first they were identified. They are, we are Christ-like. That means everything they did reflected Christ. And in Acts 9, 2, it says that when, when Paul, this was when Paul, Saul, before he became Paul, was persecuting the church, he says that what? So, he asked for later of Damascus, he asked later to the synagogue of Damascus so that if he finds any belonging to the way, hallelujah, men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. So they were called um, a what? A people or the disciples, the, the disciples were called what? Belonging, those that belong to the way. So if we see that following Jesus Christ is not just about you following uh, is teaching you following him or what he's saying or this, but it's about becoming one with him. You know, this we see also in in John six. If you read in in in, in, in verse fifty six, said, "However, eat my flesh and drink my blood, remain in me, and I in them." He was talking about the Father. I even he even went in a point said that I and the Father are one. That means he follow the way of the Father. And Jesus said that if you remain in me, if you want to become one with me, you have what? To abide. You have to what? To eat. So for us, for us, we have to teach them to become one with Christ. Hallelujah. We have to teach them to follow the way of Christ. We have to teach them to conform with Christ. We have to teach them to, to become one with Christ. Next, next slide. So it's not just about you just learning, you know, you're not about you just teaching them, oh, this is what the word of God said, but now you have to teach them. That is the mentorship of it. You have to teach them, to, to, to teach them, you know, so that they will also become one with Jesus. They have to conform to his image. They have to walk the way they walk. They have to follow his person, to follow the way of life, to follow how he lived, to follow how, Everything, how Jesus did everything, now you have to teach them. Hallelujah. The same way you have been disciple, you now have confirmed or you are conforming, you now have to teach them also to conform to the image of Christ. They have to become one. They have to follow Jesus, follow his person, follow his commandment, follow his way, follow what he teach, follow everything. Because if you read, if you read in the book of six, when you talk about before it, they deserted them. And then it says that, you know, this is why Jesus, you know, teaching them, the disciple to follow, not just to follow, but also to abide. Hallelujah. So that's why in John, in first John 2, 6 says that whoever says, whoever says he abide in him, he must also walk in the same way he walked. So we have to teach people to focus or to walk in the way that Jesus walked. 
to do things like Jesus did, to be like he was. Hallelujah. So how do you do that? That's because, because you have already been disciple. That means for you to be mentoring someone, that means you already have that. In you. you might not have, but if you have learned, you can still go and disciple as you grow together with other people as well. It doesn't really necessarily say that, oh, I have to become a pastor before I have to know all the scripture before I go and mentor someone. No. You know, so you really have to go and preach. You teach them to walk in the same way he have walked. Hallelujah. And if you read in, 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 in if you read in John 13, John 13, he said that for I've given you an example that you should do, you should do as I've done. Hallelujah to you. So everything that Jesus did, you know, we should also follow that same example, the way he teach, the way he preach, the way he treated others, the way he, everything, the same, every aspect of it, we also have not just to make it in our life, but also to disciple others to do the same. And now in 1 Peter 2, 21 says that, for these you are called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. So we should follow his steps. That means if you are following, teaching somebody, follow his that Jesus suffered. You have to also teach the person to follow the same step. You also have to teach the person to enduring in his suffering. Hallelujah. To enduring in his suffering, to teach them to what? To abide in a way that, um, that um, Jesus Worked and in the first Corinthians, if you read in first Corinthians, there displayed in the scripture that for though you might have 10,000 instructed in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. He was talking about what a mentor, he didn't have a lot of mentor, only one. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. That means Paul was the one who preached the gospel to them, teach them, get them saved, and all other, other things. Or in other churches, you can see that say that, you know, yeah, some have laid the first foundation. <laughs> you know, some have laid the first foundation, which is the first component. Probably some they have come and they have preached already to them. They have received the Holy Spirit. They have been baptized. And now you are coming to lay another foundation, another layer to mentor them. That's why Paul said that um, some have preached, have, uh, have, have planted, and some you know, now I'm coming to water it, and then the Lord is the one that make it grow. So we see that. Therefore, he says, I urge you, imitate me. For this reason, I've sent you Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ. In another word, he's saying that I've already Lay the foundation. I've already teach you. I've already mentored you to follow Christ. Through my example. Hallelujah. Through my example of living. And as a faithful servant, as a faithful son, Timothy, who is also uh, the one I mentored, he knows the way I've lived among you. And then what he says, he will come and remind you the way I've lived. That means he will display to you he will show you how they did it. And he will, ask, he, he will also what? teach you every way. This is how he will teach you. He will remind you everything that I've done. So, man, discipleship, as you teach them to follow Christ, you said what? Be imitator of me as I am of Christ. Just like Jesus said that I've, just I, I and my father are one. Whatever I see my father doing, I also do. Discipleship is not just about the word. Hallelujah. It's not just about you coming and teaching the word of God. In first, if you read in First Thessalonians, what does it say? First Thessalonians 1 5, if you read 5 to 7, what does it say? Because the gospel, because our gospel comes to you not simply with the word, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. In another word, it's saying that I did not just, I know the, 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 the gospel didn't come just with you. I just preached the word of God to you. I just preach the word of God to you and I display to you the gospel. This is why the word of God. No, I said, he said that, but, but come not simply with the word, but also with, with power. 
That means there is an implementation that comes with the power of the Holy Spirit. That means as the Holy Spirit enables us to live the life of the gospel, to display, to put that gospel into practice, so that though as you are preaching the word of God, who convict others to follow the same way. I don't know if I'm making sense. If you're with me, just say amen. If I'm making sense, just say amen. Amen. I did not just come to preach the word of God with what? With just, I did not just come simply to, to preach the word, but says that it is simply come with the word, but with the power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. What does that mean? That means the Holy Spirit, as he's preaching the word, the Holy Spirit, is through the Holy Spirit that we're able to display this gospel. Says our life, our epistle. So that means if, if you are discipling somebody, your life has to reflect, your life has to display. Whatever the gospel is saying, follow, honor your mother and your father. That means that word that says, honor your father and your mother, you yourself are using that word. You are displaying in the power of the Holy Spirit, displaying it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm making, I'm communicating. <laughs> so he says what? You know how we live among you. This is the same five. You know how we live among you. By what? The same way that you are enabled with the Holy Spirit to live. I will live. And then say, you become imitator of us and of our Lord. For you welcome the message in the midst of severe suffering with joy given, the, given by the Holy Spirit. And so you become model to all the believing in Macedonia and in Achaia. So we see that they didn't just go with the word and preach the word of God. They are all, they are very life. They became epistle of God. They became the gospel. Amen. So even you can also read in Philippians 3, 16 to 18, you can read in later on. Amen. Next slide. If you talk about obeying, amen. Next slide. Now, the second aspect is, um, as we are still talking about um, mentoring, of course, uh, all those, all those, this, it is, we are talking about mentoring. You mentor, you teach them to obey the word of God. And that says that, but Peter and the apostle answer, we must first obey God rather than men. Yes, as you become the disciple of Jesus Christ, you will fail, you will force, you will for persecution, you will face persecution. Amen. You will, you, you, you will face persecution. You go through, um, you know, things in life, you know, as you, I mean, being a disciple of Jesus is all about Jesus say that you have to carry up your cross and follow me. So you have to be willing to suffer. For the word, you have to be willing to suffer for your faith, even die if it's possible. <laughs> Amen. Even die if it's possible. So we see that now in 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 in, in, in as 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 they went and preached the word of God, they faced challenge, and 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 this was the the this was the the, the the disciple being persecuted because they are preaching the word of God. Not just they saw that. These people unlearned. Now they saw Jesus in them. They saw Jesus in them. And it came a point that said that how can they be a fish? I mean, they're unlearned, they're unschooled, they didn't really go and learn the Torah, they didn't go to university. How can they what? Preach the way they are preaching. So we can see that it is what? Them displaying the power of the gospel, then displaying the power of God. And he says that, yes, we must rather obey God and men. Because they preach the gospel, they will have persecuted, but they have to obey. They have to be willing to endure. Amen. So we teach them to obey the word of God. True, true, it's true. You know, obedience may come in different way. We, we, you know, we teach them the word of God, you know. Um, we teach them the word of God. It says, you know, to obey. But and then in Luke eleven twenty eight, 28, says that blessed are rather those who hear the word of God and obey it. Can even be the Rama word, can even be the logo word. You have to obey. You have to teach them to obey. It is the word of God, you know. 
it is the word of God, but everything comes from what this word. That means you have to obey the word of God and you teach them to do so. As in John 8, 29, that one says that, uh, as you also read, it says that because I always do what he pleases him, even Jesus obeyed. And he said that the same way I've obeyed, you also have to continually obey my teaching, living according to my teaching, living according to my word. So we have to teach them to abide by the word, abide to live, to make this word their life, to make this word, to eat, to feed, to, to teach them to obey, to teach them to to, to, to obey the word of God, to teach them to, to study the word of God. Not, not just to study, but also to obey, you know. Yes, to teach them to get rid of everything that entangles. You know, some of them, they might not even know how to, how to even do that, but you as, are you, as you are discipling them, you teach them, you know, you teach them. And in James 21, it says that, but don't just be what? The listener of the word of God, but also be the doer. You, know, you have to what? To do the word of God. And you have to teach them to obey. You have to teach them to abide by the word of God, to use that the word of God will be the very foundation, you know, to their work as a Christian, to their work as a believer. You teach them to observe everything that the Lord has commanded them. You teach them to, 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 to go, even as you are going to the very age, that's what in, in the second, that's what the second, the second, the second aspect of it says that teach them to observe all things that I've commanded you. You have to teach them, each and every one. You have to teach each and every one of them to observe. You know, one of the good examples about being obedient to the word, be it the logo or rhema word, you know, is, is so. You know, after Saul, not just Saul, even prophet Eli also did with his son as he disobeyed the word of the Lord. So this is what Samuel now say after he have, after he have uh, talked to, to, to Saul when he rejected the word of God and then he did not, another word was saying that he did not obey the word of God. And then uh, the prophet Samuel said that does the, war, does the Lord delight in bone offering and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? Obey is better than sacrifice, and the heed is better than fact. You have to heed in the word of God. Amen. So you teach them to heed in the word of God. Amen. Not just an aspect of, of, of really uh, going out there and teach them, and you teach them to abide, you teach them the word. You know, we, you, 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 when we talk about, you know, discipling them to teach, or you, when you feed and you teach the word of God, you are imparting knowledge into their lives. You know, you impart knowledge in their life. You know, as they grow, you know, we know that we can see that through Jesus when his disciples. So there are some words they couldn't even understand it. And it, later on, it was in a private moment they came, they decided to come to Jesus and ask, Lord, what do you mean by what you preach there? And that's where the clarity came. You know, say that what I mean is this and this and that. You know, and as we can see that, as 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 you talk about um, heed, when Jesus was warning them to take heed of the ferment of the Pharisee, uh, when you talk about, and then what do do understand? They understand it. They talk about Jesus was talking about the bread, and then when talk about oh about the 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 the, the word of God when you're teaching the people that in some they will fall in the rock and the, in the in the in the puzzles in the road, and then they didn't really understand. They have to come back and ask. So this is how discipleship is about. One one interaction can be in the group. As Jesus, Jesus did. They, he, 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 some of them, you disciple the twelve. You know, you will be one one with the twelve. You will be with three of them, or you be with one. So this is how we do it. You know, we are there to impart knowledge into them. We are there to feed them the word of God. We are there to teach them the word of God, not just by what the word of God says, but by our own very life. That our life have to reflect so that they also follow example. It says that if you want to see what the child does or say or do, you know, you have to look, the child will look at the father. Whatever the, the, the as Jesus says, whatever my father does, I also do. Actually, I see that with Tolu. <laughs> ah, I see that with Tolu. 
last uh, la, last uh, last cell group, group meeting to do late praise and worship. Debbie, a new member, <laughs> as you said. So they can be new member. So she he led praise and worship for us. Ah, it was so amazing. So we can see that you know he's learning all those songs that he got. He learned from where from his parents, you know. So we can see that we have to impart knowledge. We have to teach them. Next slide. Now, when we come to that process of where we are finished, all those as we are mentoring them, as we are teaching them to, to, to observe, as we teach them, as we go to the first stage, the first component, evangelizing to them, get them saved, get them filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and, and now we mentor them mentor them you know we teach them to you know to very aspect of obeying the word of god to obey the commandment of the lord uh, uh to obey the commandment of the lord you know i just want to say this is the requirement for you to become jesus christ after you have met all those requirements you know though we are growing into it we will not say that all of us were really met or we we're really there but we are growing as we are growing we also push other people to grow along with us. It doesn't really need for you to, oh, I've grown just, I have to wait until I've grown to maturity uh, so that I'll preach the word of God. No, it doesn't really have to be there, but you preach the word of God, even as you are going as well. So he says that if you keep to my command and abide and you abide in my love, just I've kept my father's command and abide in love. You have to keep, you teach them to keep the command and you teach them to obey the commandment of the Lord. Amen. And, 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 and this is how you identify that, you know, they have, they are disciples because they are growing or if you want to identify the disciple because they bear much fruit, you know, they will bear much fruit. He said that if you bear my much fruit, you prove that you're my disciple. That's what in John says. And then he said, you have to what teach them to believe. You know, Jesus says that, say that, and say to the Jew who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciple. So if you have to teach them to work by the word of God, you teach them to obey, but you also have to teach them to use that word of God to apply it to their very life, you know, to be, so that they what? Abide, they will live by the word, not by flesh. Said that no by flesh, but they will live, they will abide, they will take heed in the word of God. Amen. You will teach them, you know, you you teach them to love one another. As Jesus says, if you love one another, you know, if you love one another, if you have love for one another, then this is how people will know that you are my disciple through love. So this is how we are to do as Jesus have already shown, as Jesus have already have imparted. And as we ourselves, we have already learned and we also be imparted. Now we have to what? Impart into other people's life to show them to love one another. And how that love to one another is shown. Because if you say that love your enemies and Jesus have really taught his disciples to love his enemies. Amen. To so read through all the scripture. And they also say that what you have to, you know, they walk in the light of God. This is how the disciples do. And you teach them to work. And Jesus says that, you know, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follow me, hallelujah, whoever follow me, whoever abide, whoever conform, whoever is like Christ. Or you you follow the Lord in His way, in His in the way He do things, in His teaching, in His uh, ways of life. We will never work in darkness, but will have the light of life. So we see that they are what they walk in the light, and you have to teach people to walk in the light of God. Amen. And it says that they hear the voice of Jesus. And James, you know, says that in, in John 10, he says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So for you to teach them to follow Christ, you have to teach them to hear the voice of the Lord. I mean, some of them is instantly, you know, as God in power and imparts his spiritual gift. And, but some of them, they have to be taught how to hear God. They don't really know, you know. So you have to teach them to hear the voice of the Lord. If you ask now, how can I teach somebody to hear the voice of the Lord? Through the word of God. 
And as you are teaching them, the Holy Spirit also will direct you. The scripture, the scripture have all the answer that we need. If you want to know, how can I hear the voice of the Lord? Go through the Bible, you get the answer. I mean, every question of life, the answer is in the scripture. So we see that you have to teach them now to what? To hear the voice of the Lord and to follow Jesus, to follow the voice, the leading of the Lord, the leading of the Holy Spirit. We have to teach them that. So for you now, if say that, I mean, like me too, I don't know how to hear the Lord. Then you have to also learn how to hear so that you also teach others how to hear the Lord. You know? And it says, um, you also have to love Jesus, to be a lover of Jesus and of the lover of self. This is how you identify them. Not just, you know, you identify that they're true disciples, through all those characteristics, all those points that I'm just bringing up might more, but it's also, you know, as, as you grow in the word of God, as you grow in the Lord, you become more lover of the Lord and lover than self. It says that the one who comes, the one who comes after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. You have to be willing to suffer, to love the Lord more than anything. You said that you have to reject your father, your mother, your sister. It's not just about really rejecting them in a, in a, in a physical sense, but it's about regarding the Lord as higher in your life, as priority, as number one. When the Lord is directing you to something, you know, you have to come in that position of obeying that word. You don't obey your parents or your father because and they're saying you shouldn't do this, ah, you shouldn't do that. I'm not saying that you should neglect that aspect. You seek wisdom from the Lord, how you go about it. And that's how the disciples, you have to teach them because they might come to you and say that, oh, my father told me this and this and I shouldn't do it. But the word of God, oh, whatever God is telling you probably might be a logo or rhema wall, they all come from the word of God is telling you this is how you should do it. How do you go about it? You know, this is how you now seek your priority. Is rather as 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 Paul as as Peter said, as Peter says that I rather what obey God than men. Jesus said that if you know if you cannot bear that, you cannot be my disciple because you are attentive to listen. Because that's what our world it is right now. People are willing to obey the world than obey Christ. And if you want to disciple somebody, you have to teach them to obey Christ. No matter, even if your family is against it. How many people have been there? How many people have been rejected because they chose to obey Christ? How many? Some, they even Muslim, they converted to Christianity and because they embraced Christ, now their family are rejecting them because they want to follow the will of God. So we should really grow to that place of really understanding that yes, if you, because those questions, if you are mentoring somebody, eventually one word question or another, they might come and asking you like, this is happening to me, how do I go about it? So you have to mentor, teach them what the word of God says concerning that matter. How do you go about it? How do you seek? That's why it's important for you, what is important for you to what? To first of all, lay that foundation in your very life. You know, as you continue also growing in the Lord, you also disciple others in different aspects as you are growing. Amen. You have to serve. You know, disciples of Jesus serve. In first, in first John, in John, in John 12, 12, 26, say that if anyone serve me, he must follow me. And here and, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serve me, my father will honor him. He says what? If anyone serve me, he must what? Follow me. That means the disciple of Jesus serve him. As you serve him, as you follow, as you are becoming, as you are, you are his disciple, you serve him. So family, if you are not serving the Lord, do something, choose a department, do something. I mean, there are so many departments in MCC where you can serve, you can be useful to God. Amen. And you have to learn to endure hardship. You know, you teach your disciples or people you are discipling to endure hardship. I mean, following Jesus, Jesus already said, it's not going to be easy. Jesus already said that it's not going to be easy. It's not something that you just wake up, I'm ready to go. You know, like 
No, it will come with a hardship. He said that if even me, I was called demon possessed, I love you. If me, they were almost ready to throw me out of the cliff, how about you? If they were able to persecute me, they will also persecute you. That's what Jesus said. If they persecute me, they will persecute you. Every Christian, every disciple of Jesus Christ at a point in life is persecuted. Well, <laughs> I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you like, I've been in that position before and I know how it feels like. Like you are willing to do the will of God and then everybody's against you. Well, <laughs> you have to endure and it's not easy. You know, it's really not easy. I'll not, li- I'll not lie to you, say that, oh, it's going to be easy. Jesus said that it's not going to be easy. You know, so you have to be willing to suffer. Peter, Paul says that I'm willing to die if it's necessary for Christ. I'm willing to die for Christ if it's necessary. So you have to be willing. <laughs> you have to be willing. Amen. Conclusion, please, next slide. You have to endure whatever it comes in your way. It might be persecution. It might be um, hardship. It might be you have to pick up your cross and follow Jesus Christ. You have to pick up your cross and follow him. Amen. Not everybody might accept you. Paul was not accepted by anybody. Peter, all the disciples, nobody. I mean, if you look at the early church, almost every Christian, everyone was persecuted. So as a conclusion, 2 Timothy 2, verse 1 to 3 says, if you therefore, my son, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me from among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach also, others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So we see that being a disciple of Jesus, one thing I can tell you, family, is that it's not going to be easy. You know, Jesus, I'm not the one saying, Jesus is the one who said it. You fall persecution, for my name, they will take you to synagogue, they will flog, they will flog you. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the early church, they went through that, right? Some they are putting even in this very own where we are laying our feet, people go to jail just because you are publicing or you you minister, you share the word of God, the word of God. You know, people in this in this in this very place where we are putting our feet, you know, the minister, mission people, evangelists, they went to jail. Some they were deported. Jesus said, if you do not leave your mother and father and mother, if you do not reject, deny your own self, you cannot be my disciple. And this is what we are doing. We have been committed, you know, that ministry. Now the Lord is saying that we should go out there and preach the gospel, get people saved, accepted, and then you disciple them. As he has entrusted us, as we are growing, as we are pouring out into our life, as each and every day, the, the ministry has been pouring into our life. Now we have been entrusted. Now we have to take whatever we have learned this far, and we have to also commit to other people. We have to disciple other people. We have to teach other people. We have to commit this message of the gospel to other people so that they also would take the same message and transfer to others and others and others as the generation and generation continue moving forward. But the main is what? The main stand is like we have to endure all things. Amen. So we have also to break all those misconceptions. We also have to break all this misconception that only pastor and leaders, you know, um, only mature. I need to get mature before I preach the gospel. I need to go to the seminary. I mean, <laughs> well, when it comes to be to, to go to seminary, I was the first one. I mean, like when my church back home told me, oh, there is a seminary school that everybody must apply. Like, oh, I was like, oh, I was a leader already. So I was like, wow, I really, it was re- I really still have that strong desire. I really want to go to the seminary school. I really want to go and learn so much. 
well, I went, you know, I learned for months and then I eventually have to stop because I have to come to China. I felt so sorry, I'm like, oh, I didn't finish my, that's the only thing I felt sorry about. Like I couldn't finish my seminary school. Like I'm out there learning, you know, and people go there, they become whatever person, become these. It's not about you going to the seminary and learn and these and that so that you become a pastor. You know, that's what I taught in the beginning that I have to go to the seminary so that I can preach the word of God. <laughs> well, here, my, I haven't finished my seminary, my seminary lesson. I haven't even graduated yet. <laughs> and this is me here sharing the word of God. Oh, amen. So did the first disciple became preacher or seminary, did they graduate from school? They were unlearned. What they had already was just the word of God and the Holy Spirit. And what they did, they went and they preached. It's not about you becoming a pastor or having or being in a seminary or I have to mature so that I can share the word of God. No, you go, you share the word of God. If they believe in the word of God, you conduct the prayer for them. They accept Christ. They, and then you, if there is water, just like, just like Philip, if there is water where you are or a river, baptize the person right away, you know? And after you have come out from the water, you place your hand on the person, you pray and they will receive you. Pray so that they receive the Holy Spirit and bam, Tell, I'm telling you, they will receive the Holy Spirit. And after they receive the Holy Spirit, you call them home. You go with them at home and start discipling them. It's not about maturity. You don't really need to be a pastor so that what? Uh, you go out there and preach the gospel so that you can disciple. No, if you look in the early church, they, what they say? They say that when they were persecuted, what did they They scattered throughout Jerusalem, Samaria, everywhere they went. They, what did they went to do? They went preaching the gospel. If you see people in Samaria and other places, and they, they, all of them, they heard the word of God. That's why and all those believers or disciples were all like mature or rabbi or scribes. They knew the scripture. No. Why did they only have the word of God? The word that the Lord entrusted them to carry. And that's what they carry with them, the word of God. So it doesn't really mean you have to be mature so that you can disciple others. You can disciple while you are growing with Christ, while you are growing, you know, to mature, to conform or to, to, to become, to attain that maturity as a standard Christ. You also can pull the little ones, pull the one you see that you can carry them along. You carry them along and you disciple them as you are also growing. Age does not matter when it comes to discipleship. You can be an 18 year old girl or boy or a man, whatever, you can still disciple somebody that is 50 years old. It doesn't matter about the age. It doesn't matter about the age, you know? Because that person is older than me. Oh, I cannot, you know, I'm too young. No, it doesn't matter, you know? The Lord is calling each and everyone to go out there to make disciples, to baptize, to teach, so my, my prayer for each and every one of us is that we will go out there and do what the Lord as we have come today I believe all of us we have taken notes and we know the procedure as the Lord has told us you just take that procedure as we continue in this month we are going to learn so much about uh, discipleship as well and we just go the first step you have to do is just get them saved and after they're saved, you what? Get them baptized. You baptize them in the water. After they have come from the water, you pray that they receive the Holy Spirit. And after they receive the Holy Spirit, you start mentoring them, start teaching them to follow Jesus, to obey the word, and then to abide in the word, to abide in the Lord. And if you do respect in the Holy Spirit, you will help them to grow as well as you are growing. So let us bow our head. And let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, teach us, hallelujah. Let us just pray that the Lord, do these words that you have given, this great commission that he has given unto us, that the Lord will grant you boldness. Boldness, because when, they, when the early church were persecuted, that's what we ask for. That Lord, enable your servant that they might speak your word boldly. Yes, we already have been committed the message. Let us pray, Rebosha, as I invite Pastor Malik to pray 
as well for us. Let us pray that, Father, may you grant me boldness to minister, to preach, to carry out, to do, to do the work of the Lord, the great commission, the, the, the word as you have discipled, as I have been discipled, so that I will go out there and I will disciple others as well. Continue praying, continue praying, pray. ask God to help you. Yes, discipleship is not easy. We just learn from God's servant today. Yes, there's, there's promise at the end, but before promises, there are hardship. Yes, there are hardship, there are aspects. And Jesus.